At this time, I'd like for you all to uh, stand with us as we're led in prayer by Brad Ratliff from New Hope Christian Church and also our school board and are made standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Will you pray with me, please? Dear Father, we thank you so much that you have uh, seen fit to fill our lungs with air, to fill our lungs with life today. God, we pray that we will use it well. God, we pray for um, just our leaders and those who are involved. We pray for our um, our hearts to be right where you want it to be and that we respond well to you. God, thanks for loving us. Thanks for Jesus. God, and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our future meetings include the Bartlett Station Commission on June the 2nd at 7:30 a.m. The Bartlett City Beautiful Commission, June the 3rd at 6.30 p.m. Family Assistance Commission, June the 7th at 6 p.m. And Planning Commission, June the 7th at 7 p.m. It's our tradition, well, it's been a while since it's been our tradition, but we will reinstate our tradition of recognizing scouts that are with us. And I noticed we did have some scouts. If we could have you come forward up here. Uh, introduce yourself and the badge you're working on, what, what pack you're with. Yeah, he'll walk with you. I know we're ugly, but we're not that scary. Go ahead, tell me your name. <laughs> we are pack 255. Mm-hmm. Uh, my name is David Crawford. All right, and you're working on which patch was it? Two five five. No, one. Hmm? We just finished up for the year. Okay. So we're, we're heading into the, the summer months now. Oh, great! But just completed. Um, our Weevils badge. We just well, completed it. Yeah. Well, that's a, there's a lot going on, and you just hang in there and learn all the good things that will serve you well the rest of your life. Thank you for being with us here tonight. We also uh, want to take a moment during recognition and uh, just give a shout-out to all the folks that Worked in our vaccination site over the last several weeks. Uh, that was, uh, they did a great job. We, I'm just disappointed that more of our residents and others didn't choose to come out and take advantage of it, but it was there for them. And uh, that's all we can do is provide it there. And so uh, Chief Wiggins, is he here? Yeah, he, he and... Uh, Chief Gately and uh, Commander uh, Justin McNeely, are you here? And uh, Chief Cox and Chief Soans, all of them played a uh, real important high level, and also Mark Brown uh, as well. And so I, want, I wanted to recognize them, but if they would all stand along with all of the people that are here that volunteered at any one of those vaccination sites, please stand. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for all that great work. Um, now... Uh, I don't think I've missed anybody. Well, uh, we got a judge here. He, I never know whether he wants me to introduce him or not. He's saying not, but Judge Frank Avila is here with us tonight. Always glad to have you. And got the other judge, too. Where? Damn. Oh, Judge Brown. Hey. That, now, that is a special treat. We don't normally get him here. Um,
If there's no others, then I would uh, ask that we start the business of the day, the official business of the day, the first item being, being the approval of the minutes from May the 11th uh, Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting. Move to approve. Second. Second. Motion. Second. And a second. Um, any discussion on this? If not, will you go to your device and cast your vote? All right, the minutes are approved uh, unanimously. Next item, uh, under new business, Madam Clerk. Second reading of Ordinance 2101, an ordinance to adopt the 2021-2022 General Fund, Street Aid Fund, Solid Waste Fund, General Improvement Fund, Drug Enforcement Fund, DEA Enforcement Fund, Drainage Fund, Parks Improvement Fund, East Citation Fund, Bartlett City School Fund, Utility Fund, Debt Service Fund, and Capital Improvements Fund budgets. Um, we have previously passed this and have the public hearing set for June the 8th. Uh, and tonight, of course, is uh, up for second reading. Um, Mr. Thebus is here, and I believe he brought some additional information to share with you all tonight. Just to clarify, I know that we had at least one alderman that had asked several questions, and we had shared the answers with everyone, but we wanted to just hit some of those uh, highlights again. So, Mr. Thebus? Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first thing I'd like to point out is the uh, debt service fund uh, has been changed slightly, and that's due to an error in calculating the principal and interest that was due for this next year. Uh, it's on page six of the budget uh, document. It's on page uh, nine of your packet and page three of the actual ordinance. And I call your attention to, in the middle of the page, debt service fund expenditures, the contribution to fund balance, it, it originally read 196,759. It's been changed to 41,368. And that is, uh, that's a change in the ordinance itself. It has already been made and it will be uh, for the second and third reading of the ordinance uh, as written. And this was due to, uh, again, uh, didn't calculate all of the principal and interest that was due this next year. There's a difference of about 155,000 uh, increase in uh, expenditures. So that reduced the amount of uh, contribution to the fund balance in the general uh, debt service fund by that amount. I would like to call your attention uh, to uh, the overhead screen, and you may have a, a handout as, as well. When we put the budget together, uh, Next slide. there were several items that the administration wanted to emphasize, and I'd like to go through these just briefly on the overhead screen and uh, make a brief uh, explanation of, of what we're doing. First item is pay raises, 4% pay raises, and it requires $1,150,000 in order to do that. Administration is focusing on providing competitive salaries to public safety personnel as well as, as, well as other city staff in order to retain and attract quality professionals for these positions. We compete with, we compete with surrounding cities as well as Shelby County in recruitment of personnel. Administration wishes to provide a 4% across the board pay increase to all full time staff for this purpose, totaling $1,150,000, and this will be recurring revenue that will pay for this. The second item on the uh, overhead screen is the debt service contribution. It's not actually on the overhead. Pardon me? Yeah, it is. Okay. I thought we had another slide. I'm sorry. My fault. Uh, the second item on the overhead screen is the debt service contribution of one million dollars and you can find that on uh, 
page 19 of the budget document itself, we show a transfer of $4.555 million into the debt service fund. That's an increase of a million dollars over the last budget year. And the reason we had to do this, or we want to do this, is because the city issued $12.4 million in debt since June of last year, June of 2020. And the principal and interest on that debt, and it was $2 million for the city shop completion, $8 million for the Bartlett High School renovations that we promised, and engineering street overlay projects of about $2.8 million. That's a total of $12.8 million. The debt service requirements on these, these three notes for next year increased expenditures, but just shy of $1 million. So that's why we're asking the board to fund this increase with recurring funds in the form of a tax rate. The third item on the overhead screen, transfers to drainage, a general improvement fund, and Bartlett Station. I believe the city of Bartlett may be the only city in Shelby County that does not have a, uh, a stormwater fee. Uh, Rick may correct me on that, but I believe that's correct. Uh, we pay for our drainage fund with, uh, with fees from developers and others that go into the drainage fund, and we also have a little bit of interest and we usually try to transfer a million, uh, hundred thousand dollars to that fund to make it solvent on an annual basis. We didn't have that last year in the budget, so we're providing a hundred thousand dollar transfer this year to the debt drainage fund in order to maintain that fund. The general improvement fund relies on city service fees primarily for its funding. Software and computer maintenance costs continue to rise as annually as the city becomes more dependent on these services to operate efficiently. We're asking for $275,000 be transferred to the general, from the general fund to the general improvement fund in order to maintain a positive balance in this fund. We're also increasing our contribution to the Bartlett Station Commission by $10,000 in FY22. These funds come from a hotel motel tax paid to the city and are used for tourism expenditures. And we, we transfer almost all of what we get in hotel motel taxes to the Bartlett Station Commission for their activities. And that's, that's the $10,000 requested for that transfer. The fourth item on the overhead screen is the employer portion of health insurance increase. Last year, we paid for a 6% increase in uh, health insurance premiums. We used the health insurance fund for that purpose. We didn't use money out of the general fund, although part of the, in, a part of the insurance is paid out of the general fund, but the increase, the 6% increase that we realized last year, we paid for it out of the health insurance fund. We can't do that this year because we don't have the money uh, the funds in the health insurance fund to do that. So we're requesting 343200 in recurring funds to be funded in the general fund uh, for, the, for the employer portion of the health insurance uh, increase. The next item on the overhead screen is public safety attrition percentage use. Normally in our budget process, we we use what we call an attrition rate for police, fire, and uh, ambulance service. And it's anywhere from two to two to uh, uh, four percent. And what that means is, after they determine what their salaries are going to be for that year in those three departments, we reduce it, even though they they need the money. We reduce it by two to four percent in those departments and it's called an attrition. And it's uh, generally for, we think we may have uh, retirements or people quit or whatever, somebody quits and we don't hire a replacement for some period of time. And that's what the attrition is used for in the annual budget. And but, I would just say that's also 
uh, has a historical basis to it. We look at historically what has, what are those cases that have retired or um, have gone to a different company or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so it's not just a number that we pick out, and it's not just an annual number, but we do it on the basis of kind of historical data that we have. Mr. Mayor, could, yes. could he repeat those departments? Did you say fire and police was the only two? Well, yeah, he he, he pointed out fire, police, and, police. and ambulance. I, can't, I always count fire and EMS as the same, but he likes to call them different. I don't know, the chief may have got him to do that. I'm not sure, but uh, <laughs> yeah. It threw me a curveball too, so we're good. <laughs> so we're asking for, uh, uh, Three hundred and sixty-eight thousand one hundred to be used uh, to take care of that attrition, so they can operate at full capacity. And the last item on the overhead screen is a figure for four hundred and sixty thousand dollars. We did have uh, net revenue loss last year. If you looked on the summary page in the budget in the general fund, you'll notice that we had transfers in of uh, 4.8 million. That came from the CARES Act money that we received from uh, Shelby County and also from the state. We received 1.3 million from the state. Those were non-recurring funds. We used them one time. And if you'll notice uh, on page nine of the actual budget document, um, we're going from 4.8 million in transferred funds from these sources to 299000 So that's a huge reduction in the revenue stream, and all of that was non-recurring revenue, and uh, we're trying to replace a portion of that with that $460,000. Out by the side of, of each of these items, you have a, an estimated tax rate increase that would have, we'd have to use to fund those particular items. If you total it all up, that's 24 cents, and that's what we're asking for on top of the uh, $1.51, which has been approved both by the assessor's office and uh, the mayor signed that document today, and we're sending it to the state for verification, and they should get back to us in a few days to verify that our certified tax rate is, in fact, $1.51, for the 2021 tax year. So we're asking for 24 cents on the tax rate to fund these particular items, and uh, it's all recurring revenue. None of it is uh, non-recurring, it's all recurring. So those, uh, those are the things we're asking for. I will say that we will receive, or we have received, some non-recurring revenue from the American Recovery Act. And uh, we're trying now to study as to how we can best use it. And uh, we'll be bringing probably a, a resolution uh, after June 30 uh, to spend part of that money. But we haven't decided yet, or the mayor and the administration has not decided yet uh, how we want to spend that money. Uh, there was some discussion as to whether or not we could use it for replaced lost revenue, but the indications or uh, documentations I've seen recently indicate it's going to be very hard for us, the city of Bartlett, to use those funds for lost revenues. We may be able to do some, but not all. So we're still studying that, that act, and uh, there's a lot of information out there, and I don't know what you've heard. But uh, we're studying it. We've, we've got the Federal Register that came out on the 17th, I think, or maybe May the 10th. It's 134 pages long, and it describes how we are allowed to use that money. So we are researching it. The Finance Department has, has reviewed it or trying to review it as best we can. So it's going to be uh, some time before we actually decide uh, how we get that money. Yeah. And I also say uh, early on in this process, the American Recovery Act, 
we got word from the Treasury and National League of Cities that we were going to get close to $16 million. And that didn't come true. We got half of what we were going to see, receive uh, last week as from a wire from U.S. Treasury, uh, and we got $2.8 million. So that's half of what we're going to receive. We're going to get the, the other half of it in a year's time. So total about $5.6 million. <clears throat> that's far cry from the $16 million that we started out with. Yes. So uh, that's where we are. And that's one of the reasons that we didn't put any of that money in this budget, even though there was rumblings about that would be coming. There was no sense putting it in the budget until we knew that we were, in fact, going to get it and what that amount was going to be and what we could spend it on. And uh, that's what we could spend it on is still a bit of a moving target. I know all of uh, Dick's finance folks have been studying it and we thought we might be able to spend it on this and then got to another page and didn't look like we could when you looked at page I don't know what page number it was but <laughs> a different page number so they've been really studying it to try to determine if we can use uh, for lost revenue uh, how do we account for that uh, by their bookkeeping standards because they're we're expecting an audit from potentially the feds the state and perhaps the county on the Fed's behalf. So we want to be sure that we don't spend something we have to give them back. And that's why it's going to take us a little longer to get through that than even I would like. But um, I, that's all I had to add. You have questions? I do, Mayor. The, all right. So we expect that certification from the state on that tax rate to be back before the next uh, before the third reading uh, yeah okay. oh yeah yeah we expect it back in first of next week i'd say the certified tax rate <coughs> uh, i'm gonna i will send it the signed copies that the assessor's office signed and then mayor mcdonald signed i'm going to send it to the state board of equalization tomorrow and hopefully hear back by the end of the week whether they approve it or not. I think all the documentation is there. Uh, there's no question in my mind that we went about calculating it in the proper manner. The assessor's office agrees with it, so I think it's just a matter of State Board of Equalization saying, yes, the numbers look good. Uh, we will certify that you've calculated it correctly. Again, I'll just add, Mayor, I think you're prudent and used good judgment on counting this 2.8 or 5.6 in, in this year's budget. I got a question. Yeah. Yeah, in the last meeting, uh, the uh, mayor here summed it up, a 4% raise top to bottom. Well, I didn't know whether it was going from top to bottom or sideways or whatever, but I found out that um, everybody is going to get 4% from the very top till not us, but I'm talking about everybody else will get that. So I just wanted that for, on the record. Well, let me say this, Bobby. I have not said that I would give the uh, appointed people that raise. Yeah, that's true. But all others who are full-time would receive that raise. Very well said. Thank you. You know, everybody uh, from top to bottom in the city worked diligently last year uh, during this pandemic. And uh, we were open every day, even though City Hall was closed. Uh, finance office and other offices were open every day doing business as usual. So everyone was uh, taking part in the activities, exposing themselves potentially with the virus, and uh, especially the public service, the public safety people did. So I think uh, that's one reason why we want to do this and reward them for a job well done. 
So what he's talking about there, uh, he's letting the cat out of the bag, so I'll <laughs> explain it a little bit. We're looking at that money that is coming in as a possible way, as Memphis has already talked about doing, of paying our employees a bonus over and above the 4%. But whether that's paid, as in other communities, at a higher level for public safety uh, and public works, people who are out there on the streets, mm -hmm. than it is for people who are located in offices is something we've not finalized in, in order to give you all a proposal. And we looked at a number of different proposals, uh, some who would say, well, everybody ought to get paid the same. I, I'm not sure that's true, but I'm not going to shut the door on that right now. I think there is a difference in the pandemic about risk. And uh, so, I'm, again, I'm open to having that discussion. But uh, so that's out there as far as that money. Once we can get con confirmation that uh, we can, in fact, spend it that way. And we believe I believe we can, but we're going to get a couple more people to get more comfortable with it. Good. Mayor, I'd just like to add, uh, it's, it's in the business world is getting more and more difficult to fill employment positions. It's, uh, it's hard to believe how much our world could change in four months. And getting people to even apply for jobs, to get jobs, and you're constantly seeing, I saw the other day that Target's paying $15 an hour just to come to whatever you do at Target. I was uh, watching the other day where even FedEx, a lot of these major companies are offering 3 and $4 an hour above what they was paying just to get people to, to employ people. Um, I believe with all my heart that, that we've got the best employees that deserve the very best, and I'm very glad that we can do uh, – that, that we can reach out and try to, to shore some of that up. Because at some point in time, uh, I think it's, uh, I don't want to speak out of term, but I think it even in this city is getting more and more difficult to fill positions that come available. Openings are coming open and you not be able to fill them. And I'm not saying all that is due to the money. I think some people just want to sit at home. They make more money sitting at home. But, but the overall spirit of the business world is, is it's hard to fill employment positions, even it, regardless of, of the pay. Uh, I want to make sure that, that the more positions come open in Barlett, that we continue to hire the best, the hardest working people we can to serve us. Um, and I'm just glad that, uh, that this is a step in, the, step in the direction and hopefully we can shore some of these things up so we remain competitive and don't lose people to other, other municipalities. Yeah, I would reiterate that that you know, and it's it's new employees as well as retaining those who are yes. doing a great job right now, and we need to retain those people um, and not lose them to other entities or whatever. So that's real important to me, and I think they deserve it. So, Alderman Pleasant, um, you know, and any job or in most jobs when you start out you're going to start at a entry level and uh, as you get fully mature and seniority and experience you gain more but i will say keep in mind that the younger people uh the newer employees or the ones that are working their way up the ladder they are the ones that has the children getting the clothes, the diapers, the uh, taking care of them while uh, they work. It's money. And just like the di difference in us, look, I lived, uh, built a house next door to my mother and daddy on the same property. And uh, when we first started out, my father could have helped me got everything. But I didn't want him doing it, or mother. I didn't want somebody saying they done this or done that. Uh, and they, I don't think he would have, but I felt better about myself because I was smart enough to do it and pay for it as it went. But, you know, like when we first started off, 
uh, just to be on our own and not being in an apartment somewhere and not leaving the little community that I've lived in my whole life. Uh, we didn't have a stove. I found a stove on a electric stove. I had the house rewired. It was all, I mean, wired new, but I didn't have any appliances. It didn't have a hot water heater. Uh, had a 110 heater that my mother and them had bought uh, back when I was a teenager, or, or you know, below teens, four teens. So, and that comes, you know. It, it was hard, but when you're doing stuff on your own, you have to do without a lot of things that us as older adults just take for granted. So anytime we've got our money given to our city to give to our employees, really think about maybe, you know, just, I love the fire department because I was only 34 years uh, with city of Memphis. Love the police department because a lot of kin folks on the police department. But then to be fair, honest to God, fair, if I was working right now, I would just seem to see a little of that money too go to a people that's just in the food chain, just starting out, climbing the ladder, who possibly need money more so. You know, you give me a raise of $50,000, and I really wouldn't do a thing. I'd, put, I'd save it or buy gold with it. Uh, but you give somebody that don't have nothing or just barely skimming by a month, uh, give them an increase in money, and they're going to spend on stuff they need. So, so much for all the talk, but a lot of times, as a fireman, I never felt like I deserved more than the police department or the public works. Uh, I think m most uh, people that are adult thinking they really don't think they're anything special above anybody else. You're doing your job, you know. So, so much for that, and thank you for letting me speak, Mayor. Well, let me assure you that uh, over the last three years, at least, and maybe four, we've been looking at this because we could see it coming, you know. Once we saw the first company say they would pay $15 to flip hamburgers, we knew that okay, that's gonna it's gonna get to us. We looked two years ago with a consultant that uh, Ted brought in for us to work with at some of these changes, and just to just to condense, there's always been a lot of talk about condensing down the steps in public safety where there's seven, maybe there should be five. That discussion's gone on mm, yeah. for 20 years that I know of. Um, but that cost alone, do you, you remember, Ted? Do you remember? Uh, no, because we, a lot of the estimates that we had were for all the tables, not just the public safety. Right, right. Well, it was a sizable figure just to do that. and. Then when you started looking, and it, I'll just tell you my philosophy on this, and you may have a different one, and certainly the next mayor. I, I've always said I hope he's prettier and smarter than me. But no uh, way. I think that we have to set the job on the basis of competitive pay. We can't, I can't just pay somebody because I like them. I like their part of the work. Or a group of people. I have to say, what is the competitive market for this? And how much, how close to that can I afford to get? And that's the way I've always worked with these proposals. Um, and so that's where we are right now. And in doing that right now, the best I can come up with until we, unless we get something different uh, from the federal government, is to do the four percent, the uh, four percent raise. And by the way, that's not a cost of living raise. Is talk on you know social media. Well, that's a so the two percent are so uh, cost of living. They are not. They are never were intended to be cost of living since I've been the mayor. They are just raises. And we, 
I saw that we were in a position, I believe that we could provide 4% this year instead of two. And, you know, unfortunately we had that one year where we just had what we could get out of the emergency money. Uh, we didn't have enough coming in. Man. So uh, when I, uh, as we go into this and, you know, as we look at any other iterations you all would like to, uh, end of the day, we got to pay for it. You know, I, I mean, that was the first thing I noticed in the in the guy that did our payroll uh, thing. He it would have been a in, a pretty a pretty big change in the way we code our pays, um, and a difference uh, that because right now some steps have a small raise to them. Some steps have a big raise, and that's happened over time as people have moved into a new position, and when they got there, they weren't really going to make much more than they were in the last position when they are making a lateral move, so the, that tier got bumped. And that was great then, great for that group of people, but it's caused us a problem down the road. And so we have to look at that. That's something, if we don't get it addressed the next year and a half, somebody else will have to address it because it's coming. It'll need to be addressed. Yes, well, uh, Paul. You know, and Mayor, I may have understood, uh, misunderstood or either you know, I was misunderstood. I was talking about some of the one-time money was coming back that was going to be dispersed between the employees. Right, right. And uh, not reoccurring. Right, right. No, I... I, I thought on right. you know, sharing that, you yeah. know, but... Well, again, that's something we'll have to determine whether yeah. or not, as, as I stated, my position is the police and the fire and the public works folks were more at risk in what they were doing than others. Definitely. And in other communities, they have been giving them a bonus out of this money. Uh, so... That's what I've been looking at, but I've been given proposals for uh, lots of other ways to do it, and we will, yeah. you know, we can talk about that when we get to spending that money. Right now, we have a budget to pass uh, that we need to get done by the end of July, and so I don't want us to get hung up, even though I've spoken about 10 minutes on it. Yeah, uh, I, didn't I don't want that. us to get hung up on what we will do that with that money until we know what the money is and how we can spend it. Right. Yeah. And, and another thing I was saying, excuse me, but um, I'm not talking about, I know we're going to have to pay a larger amount of money to people coming in in the fire service and uh, EMS and the police department. And I expect that and know that to be the right way. It's, it's a, a known, you know. But I was just thinking, you know, sometimes, the, the youngest and the people, I don't care who you are or what kind of job you do, you never, you can just look on your little thing, you got 1% of uh, $1,000 a month, you know? Uh, so, uh, I mean, it's a lot of things that affects, it affected a lot of people. And a lot of people, like I tell you right now, they save money because they didn't have to take a bath every other day and get out and, <laughs> and they had to cut them back on going out and wasting money. So they might have they might have been like some of us, they saved money. Yeah. But so much for that and I'll let him. Uh, I, I agree, Alderman Parsons, uh, and I think it was something you said. The um, Come July, when the Tennessee drops out of this additional funds, mm -hmm. it'll be easier to employ some people that have been sitting on the sidelines. It'll be easy for us, it'll be easier for other employers. But in the meantime, we need a long-term fix that, that we may not get done in this year's budget, but we're gonna have to be looking at it over the next years. Agreed. Yes. I just had one question, Dick, on it, the uh, part that says employer portion of health insurance increase. My understanding is there's not an increase for the employees, though, That's right? correct. That's correct. Okay. I wanted to make sure that that was, that was still the uh, that, situation. That's correct. We had an increase of 6% over our last year, and we paid for that 6% out of the health uh, insurance fund. 
It had we a reserve amount. We can't use it this year, and even though the rates did not change, we still have to fund that amount, right. and that's what we're trying to get I just wanted to make sure because it said employer portion that nothing had changed. So thank you. It'd be employer portion, I guess. I have a question or a comment. You know, I just, you know, over for the employees looking back, I think the past five or six years, even though depending on if the employee or the employer, a 2% raise is a cost of living or is it an actual raise, I just hate that. This year, I'm, I'm thankful for this year that, that whatever those raises was didn't get up, didn't not get eat up by increased health care costs. But what I do like about what the proposal is, is going back to the latter, a 4% increase basically essentially takes all those tables and increases them by 4% too across the board. Yes. So, so, it's, so it's moving the ball in, the, yes. in a forward motion there. <clears throat> Anybody? All right. I now, move we I approve. A motion on the, uh, can I get a motion on the second reading of or Ordinance 2101? Oh, second. I have a motion and a second. I guess you got who those were. Um, all right. Any other discussion at this time? I might have to tap dance for a minute. When David shut his computer, he has to reboot here. I'm good. good? Well, good while we're again. waiting, All right. I have a quick question. Yes. Um, so two of the three times that we're meeting for the budget, we've always gotten papers the day of. Are we, are we expecting anything else on the third reading? Expecting anything what? Yes. Uh, within an hour of us meeting up here for the last two times, we've gotten paperwork and numbers are we expecting anything for the no. third time we meet this is it only what you might request okay, okay. which Thank is you. what you got this time yes sir based on your request yes sir now last time it was a work session uh, and I think we didn't we send those documents out by email no sir we for the work session the, did we send the, those emails out before the work session on the last, on the uh, work believe, session. I believe we did. Last, yeah, right before, the day before. Yeah, and, and yeah I think five. it was the day yeah, before. Yeah, the, the bound books were Friday, I think, before the Well, Friday yes, before the you received that, but you had received an, uh, a, a, uh, an email yes, with sir. some of those documents in it. Yes, there was some. Yes, sir. That's correct. Yeah, the presentation that we used had been sent out yeah. a day or two before. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, but again, if they if you have questions, I mean you're certainly welcome to do as was done here. You can ask questions. You got a question, ask it. You can also ask as you have done. Uh, Mark referred if you're asking uh, one of our uh, directors that you would involve Mark in that so that we make sure we're all on the same page, singing from the same song, but uh, you can ask for the next two weeks. What we will try to do is get all the questions and the answers to everybody before the next meeting. Uh, and that way everybody has the same amount of information. That's good. So, okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. so anything else that you have, please bring it forward. <clears throat> All right. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, will you go to your device and cast your vote, please? Uh, ordinance. 21-01 passes unanimously on second reading. Uh, Madam Clerk, item two under unfinished business. Second reading of ordinance 21-02 an ordinance to levy and assess a tax rate for ad valorem taxes upon real property and personal property in the city of Bartlett for the tax year 2021. Did you have anything else to add? As proposed in the uh, 
in the first reading of this tax rate ordinance, uh, we recommend tax rate be set at $1.75 per $100 of assessed value. Move we approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on this item? I would just point out um, there has been some some expression out there on the on the uh, social media that someone might not want the tax rate we're proposing. All I can say is one of the most frustrating things to me uh, as an elected official in this, whether it was all, being an alderman or now as a mayor, is you have to pass the budget before you get past the vehicle under which you're going to get that money. Uh, so, if if you're thinking about uh, proposing something different than what we're recommending, um, you should bring that forward at the next meeting before or during the budget part of it, because you know you can't pass a budget and then not have a way to fund it. And we'll have to make, a, you know, the budget amendments and everything that has to happen, which is why we do it in the order we do. So we have one more meeting after that to, if something goes awry with getting the tax rate and the budget set. So uh, just keep that in mind. All right. We have a proper motion and second on second reading. Any other discussion? If not, we go to your vice and cast your vote, please. Uh, on second reading, Ordinance 21-02 passes unanimously. Next is consent agenda. We have four items on consent. Anyone on this board can remove any item for separate discussion. Is there any item anyone wishes to remove? If not, Madam Clerk, will you read them into the record, please? Item 1, bid for one type 1 ALS ambulance. Item 2, bid for medical supplies for the Bartlett Animal Shelter. Item 3, bid for universal refuse containers. Item 4, authorization to auction surplus property. Um, is there a motion on this request? Motion. I have a motion and a second. Um, so there's no debate uh, on consent agenda items unless you pull them for separate. So uh, if you will go to your device and cast your vote, please, on the consent agenda. The consent agenda passes uh, unanimously. There is no new business, and so um, we will go to open discussion. Um, I just want to know, Jeremy, I want you to know, Jeremy Upchurch, that Emily was making sure I got your name out there as part of that group. So she's, she's tooting your horn. So I do want to thank you as well, and, and so many others. There, there's so many that did a great job. Um, yes, sir. The... The, I've, over the past two weeks, I've had several phone calls, just like all of us have, is what's 24 cents going to pay for? Well, first of all, for the, for the listening audience out there, I want to say thank you for watching the meeting tonight. And uh, if you do hear that question, could you please point them to the city website to look at this meeting? Because uh, that's a lot for us to spit out in three minutes at the line at Kroger. So... Uh, so anyway, so if you can, if you hear that discussion going around town, please point people to the meeting where Dick was so eloquently explaining the, the 20, 24 cents. Great. Anyone else? All right. Then we will go to uh, the audience. Uh, anyone can speak to this board on any item uh, for up to three minutes. So if you'll come up, give us your name and address for the record, please. David Crawford and Zero Pole Road. 
What? Zero pole road. <laughs> I still didn't understand it. All right, so thank you, Mr. Mayor and Alderman, for a chance to speak with you today. Uh, I've had many calls and emails with Mr. Jim Brown and Mr. Sam Harris in my attempt to get a permit to build on my land. Uh, but I think we're at a roadblock and I ask for your assistance to move forward. Uh, in my communications with Mr. Brown and Mr. Harris, I've learned that the road that leads to my land is a paper road. Mr. Harris has advised me that in order to move forward, I must put my developer hat on and fully develop this road at an estimated price of four hundred dollars to five hundred thousand dollars. To complicate matters further, Shelby County appears to have sold the road prior to Bartlett's annexation. However, this is not a large sprawling subdivision. This it is a road that essentially essentially leads only to my property. The adjoining neighbor and the owner of the road uses it as a driveway. After meeting with the owner, he offered to extend, to help extend the driveway back to our land and is willing to sign something that says that I should have access if needed by the city. However, I am not able to afford Mr. Harris's estimate and no one of sound mind would purchase that property if they knew of this requirement. I'm seeking an exception that would allow us to put a house on this land. Uh, we're a young family that desires only to move out to this community fully. Uh, it, it's, and it's great to know that we have kind neighbors already. Uh, we appreciate your consideration and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Crawford. The, uh, there are set things that you have to do. You can, you do we can't just the law is not written so we can just grant an exception. Uh, you have to go through the uh, planning uh, and then it would be the, uh, what's your board, David? Uh, BCA. Yeah, Board of Zoning and Appeals. Uh, and, and, and so I'm not exactly sure because I haven't been a part of this conversation what you're asking for but w we wouldn't keep you from your your driveway building a driveway now as it stands right now um, I I have worked with Mr. Sam Harris uh, he is very firm in his stance that this estimate of four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars to uh, take it out of paper road status is a requirement. Well, we'll now I, I did email over to Mr. Jim Brown, and I asked him, you know, is a variance the right way to go? And his advice back was, please continue to work with Mr. Sam Harris. Well, I think uh, some of us are going to have to get up to speed on this. So before you leave, if you'll make sure Jeannie or Lauren have uh, your uh, contact information, then we'll try to get up to speed so we'll be able to discuss this with you. Uh, okay? All right. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, can I ask him a question? Sure. Uh, Mr. Carver, I'm looking at, that says Pole Road, I think. Yeah, Pole uh, You've got a, a, a line on each end that goes across the road. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that this is, uh, is that three different sections or is this one whole road? So the, the black line goes across the road on each end. Bob, have you got an extra one there? Uh, yes. Let me get I printed out just enough. For I'm just trying to, to make sure that I understand what you're Okay. What your request is, what your request, what you're asking there. So what I am requesting is, you see the highlight yes, sir. for the Pole Road? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. To enter that direction down that thin strip of land. Yes, sir. And then the highlighted area is mine. Yes, sir. 
So, um, thank you. Okay. Well, as I said, there's a lot more detail that I, I'd like to know, and uh, I, I need to talk to my staff. I'm sure they're way ahead of me on all of this, and uh, then we can uh, make sure you're going the right track to try to get relief if re if relief is available. I appreciate okay. it. Yes, sir. All right. Anyone else wishing to speak to this body? If not, this being conclusion of our regular business, this meeting stands adjourned.